place we're gonna go and check out is the stone circles um, to get into the ground it's free to park but there's an honesty box which asks for one pounds each so make sure you do bring some money along We've just arrived in the stone circle field and we're going to get down into the uh, standing stone so we can talk a bit more about the history but we do need to be careful because this is a working farm still and uh, today the uh, field is full of very young cows. So Stanton Drew is actually made up of three stone circles, uh, the largest of which is actually the second biggest in the whole of the country. Second only to Avery in Wiltshire. Circles was built about 4,500 years ago in the Neolithic period in Britain and it's located just south of Bristol. Now the nicest thing about this place is it's so hidden and it's a bit of a secret you never see many people here. Stanton Drew Stone Circles were noted by John Aubrey in 1664. He found that when he came here, a lot of the stones were being chipped away by the locals to build their buildings, churches, and stone walls around their farming fields. Now we're gonna walk straight up the avenue into the largest stone circle. Funnily, the local cows here are sat right in the middle of the Great Stone Circle, which back in 2500 BC would have stood a big wooden structure similar to Woodhenge. These over here are molehills. So the largest stone circle here is 113 metres wide, which is about 370 feet, and today has 26 standing stones left. One thing I would say is that if you're planning on coming here, definitely bring a spare pair of shoes, some rally boots or some hiking shoes, because the field is full of mole hills, it's the usual Somerset clay. And the last thing that I would say about the cows is I've been here a few times before and it's often full of very young male cows and they're very friendly um, but they are prone to follow you if you get too close so I would keep your distance if you're not fond of cows. It's key here to be respectful to the farmer who has kindly opened up his land for you know tourists and people interested in local history to come and see this for just a pound each. Don't leave your litter here and if the car park's full why don't you try going into the village and coming back later. If you're looking for a different experience or something a little bit new 
I think it may be worth saying that sometimes the local pagan and druid groups come here to do some rituals that is actually free to join in. So if you're interested in that, I think they have Facebook pages and Instagram pages that you can find. So now we're just gonna head over to the Druid Arms because there's some more history related to these circles over there. And I think we're gonna get a bite to eat as well. So we're at the Druid Arms pub in Stanton Drew and in the, the pub garden is this. This is actually called the Cove and it's believed to be a, um, an old burial chamber. leaving the Druid's Arms pub, got some lunch and we're just going to head into the village to have a look around. Stanton Drew Roundhouse, which used to be a toll house built in the 18th century. So, this toll house behind me was built in 1793 by the Hartree Turnpike Trust. And a turnpike was a type of pouch that was hung on a hook, which coach and car drivers used to pay the toll for the three roads that it stands in the middle of. single sun standing stone with Holtfield's Coit. Local legend says that a giant called Sir John Hoytville threw the stone down Mayor's Knoll, which is a local hill which is very famous for having a ridge at the top where an Iron Age hill fort once stood. Make sure you give a like and click the subscribe button and comment places we should go and also make sure you click the ring and ding bell. Thank you for watching. See you 